Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael. It's the great kids call me Rue. Thanks for being on Rue Doodles Live Monday morning. It's uh, July something. Is it the uh, is it the eleventh? Is it the twelfth? I I don't know. I should uh, I should look that up on something. Let's see. Hold on one second here. Isn't that amazing? Somebody's going to tell me before I can even get my uh, my phone open here. Close. Yeah, it's not telling me. Oh, it's the 12th. Monday the 12th. Okay, so it's July 12th. Holy smokes. See, I'm behind, but I know it's 301. Three, uh, Saturday was 300 days that I've been doing Rudoodles Live. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for allowing me to uh, bolt into your bolt. I don't know if I'm into bolting word today. Right in, slide in. I'm not dancing. Can't dance. Uh, might have been a musician, but have no rhythm. <laughs> Let me say hello. It's chicken painting day, Kathy Morrow says. I'll have to remember that. Thank you. There you for some of you are listening. 12, 12, 12. It's the 12th day. You keep up with that. On the 12th day of painting. Randall Taylor Craven. Thank you for jumping on uh, board. Um, I saw some of your names yesterday. Hey, my nose is going off the charts today, so no telling what will happen. I might have to hit the sneeze button here a couple times. It's just uh, I don't know if it's my daughter's dog that we've been babysitting and uh, we just haven't had a dog in this house in a while or if it's just me and uh, and I'm, I'm running the uh, midsummer whatevers. Uh, you know, weather is kind of hot and muggy and uh, something's blooming. It's the blooming squirrels. That's what it is. Anyway, uh, Patricia Deaton, thank you for being on the show. Burke, thank you for being here from Greenville, South Carolina. Brooke Cron, always good to have you on the show. Melanie Wilkes from Shelman Bluff, Georgia. Ta-da! Someday, you know, our, we'll we'll grow old and, uh, and they'll say, you ever heard of a woman named Shh? Uh, Melanie Wilkes? I'll go, wait, what do you mean from Shelman Bluff, Georgia? Pfft, of course I have. Or somebody will say, yeah, I live in Shelman Bluff. I'll say, you know, Melanie Wilkes? It's, it's what happens. Uh, Y'all making a community out of this. Carol Todd Monday, thank you for being on the show. Kathy Morrill, thank you. Susan Peters. Lisa Ferreira from uh, Brooklyn. Aloha, she always says from Brooklyn. John Robert Small, painting pals from the coffee plantation in America, he says. Love it that you ship those beans out all over the world and uh, got to get you shipped some to my good friend uh, Chip Cash so he can grind them locally or roast them locally for me. That would be fun. Uh, Dorothy Beasley, thank you for being on the show. Jackie Wallace, Aline, Aileen, I guess it's Aileen Walker. Um, Karen Binder, thank you for being here. Uh, is Ed going to be here today? Ed was here Saturday. We might just see a clip of Ed. Uh, Ed's never too far away. He's over on the on the um, the pine cupboard. I almost said Hubbard, but I think it was the old woman Hubbard who. Lived in a cupboard. I don't know which one that was. Anyway, but Ed is not far away. Bob Hendrick, thank you for being on the show this morning. Morning from the rough and ready, tough and steady cornfields of Iowa. Man, all you need is Freddie. And uh, you would have it. Eddie, Freddie, and Steady. I've got a friend named Steady. I was with him yesterday or uh, almost dead. Michael Ashburn, howdy from Bee Blossom, Indiana. Hey, buddy, Mike Ashburn, my... Uh, Mike Ashburn is uh, is going to Kilimanjaro, not where they make the paper, but uh, where the mountain is. He's going to climb the mountain, Kilimanjaro. And we've had a r- funny run-on thing. I told him, I, how could I forget him? Because why? Well, uh, because let me go to my desk shot here just a little bit for picture in picture. There it is right there. Because I paint on Kilimanjaro paper so much of the time. And uh, there's a little shot of the snow-capped mountain. Uh, snow all the time up there. And uh, Ash is going to climb up that. I think it's 19,000 and some odd hundred feet. And uh, and Ash, you know, what am I always saying about this paper? It's it's 140-pound paper. Ash is 141. But I guarantee he's going to come back on the lean, uh, maybe on the light side of this paper. So there it is right there. But uh, Ash is getting ready to take a trip. And uh, with a group of folks, and they're going to climb that mountain. Woo-hoo-hoo. That's a long way from Bean Blossom, Indiana. Denise Albright, thanks for being on the show. Seize the day, she says. Or it's carpe diem. Yes, but carpe carpe, you know what that is, right? Seize the carp. That's if you uh, grew up fishing in the ponds in East Tennessee. Good morning from the Saki Grounds. There's Jennifer Yent. She's in Indiana also. So, uh, Renee Keys, thank you for being on the show. Renee, I see you're painting out all the time. Valerie, I see yours uh, 
Lee Schwind. Good morning from Kentucky. Will you be doing more dragonflies? Always. In fact, I'll just paint. I'll give myself a note today. Dragon, because I'm dragon kind of. Fly. Yes, I always do more dragonflies. You know, there's some things that I just love painting. I don't paint these just because um, I think they sell. I, 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 I paint them because they bring a little joy to my life. I love fishing flies. I love dragonflies. I don't like house flies. That's why I have the uh, the new bug assault gun, which shoots table salt. Man, I am I am knocking out some some house flies. The other day, Carol goes, oh, there's a fly here. And of course, around the edge of the garage door, if I just open up the little door and reach out in the garage, I've got a flash water that hangs there. It doesn't keep it hanging in the kitchen. And I just handed her the bug. I went, Ch -ch -ch, handed her the bug of salt. She goes, hand it back. And I went, yes, she likes my bug of salt. Patricia Deaton, thanks for being on the show. Nancy Catlett, thank you for being here. Karen Bender, uh, Marie White, all said 12, 12, 12. Uh, Tamberly Marie and Jean Ansalzer, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Lori Stanley, Handelmeyer Henderson, I did. Did I mail your <laughs> pen? It's a long-running thing, right? Should have a pen coming my way. Hopefully, this one will make it. Uh, Linda Lawless, thanks for being on the show. Tom, uh, from up in the soggy coast of Maine. Brother, I'm coming up there uh, in September, maybe to see a little bit of color, late September, and I hope it's not soggy, but if it is, here's what I say about that. Frogs and people are waterproof. So what? Just go get a little soggy with it. But Tom, I always enjoy. Tom, you got a great hand, man. You are a good illustrator. And if y'all are watching Tom's work, uh, good artist, Deborah Spangler. Uh, listen, it's it's no secret on this show. I've we've been doing this for 300 days. When you ask me if I'm going to paint more dragonflies, there's only so many things I can paint. I'm a storyteller who stumbles into painting for storytelling's sake. I didn't start sketching an art for necessarily art's sake, but I realized that food and storytelling and and uh, building and quilting and crafts and skills, they're all a part of being a maker. And that's what I am. I'm a maker. Right now, I'm going to make some coffee. And I brought, uh, uh, I, I needed coffee today because of my sinuses. And uh, so I just want to take you on a little trip. And I was reading something this morning that took me on a journey. Uh, I was at the breakfast table and there are several things that happened. So bear with me here just for a second. I'm always saying, and I say this quite often in the book, uh, in the Noodle Doodle Fiddle book, oh, a sales pitch for the book. Yes, of course. Hey, be creative with what you have. You know, just be creative with what you have. Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle, if you don't have it yet, it's out. Some of you may have received shipping labels uh, there's uh, 30 something of these that go out today. The next shipment comes in, I think by Wednesday, the rest of the labels will be printed today and tomorrow. And all those will be out. All the pre-order sales are here. Beat the press, but this is available on amazon.com right now. And so is the coloring book robots, but there's a little, uh, you know, Pat captured these things early on. And as I was saying things on the show that people went, Hey, that's a good way to remember that. And this is why I have sayings. I have sayings not because I try to just come up with creative sayings or idioms or whatever. My dad always spoke in little idioms or quotes or comments or sayings or, you know what they say, or you know what they say, or you know what he says. I remember this saying. And, and so I just grew into that thinking that's how people communicated. Why? I know why. It's pictures. And I see the picture and it helps me remember the communication. That is why I journal. So when I sit down at the breakfast table in the morning, I have a cup of tea or coffee, got my cup of there, and, uh, and I'll set it right there. And then I've got, uh, usually there's a water brush, uh, sometimes a little, um, sometimes my little palette of paints will be there, the one I keep in the Altoid box. There it is right there. It wasn't there this morning because I had moved it, and neither was my little aqua brush. So I had to reach into my pocket and get my little uh, whiskey painter's brush Bup! that pulls apart like this, turns around, and then turns into this little short paint brush about a number uh, two, maybe. Uh, if you're looking at watercolor brushes, a sharp little point. Gets the job done in a journal. And then it unplugs like this. You be very careful. In fact, I even have put my glasses on to make sure I don't bend any of the little bristles back. 
and thread it in there like so, and then put it back together. So I had that, and I didn't have my paint this morning, and I sat down, and I always journal something in the mornings. I'll either journal in one of my normal journals, uh, one of my moleskin journals, or I'll journal in my Bible journal. I'll journal in something. Why? Because pictures remind me. So I did this I, I, I did this little uh, sheep uh, on Friday morning. I just want to show you a picture of him. Here he pops up right here. Watch. Boop. And that's all I had. You see, there's my little brush laying there. It's right at the end of this brush, boop, 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 right there. There's the, uh, there's the pin. That's the, uh, the pin from uh, Yasutoma. That's one of those little uh, uh, extreme pins from Yasutoma. It's an 05. And I had a pencil. It's rare that I have a pencil, but I see one laying there. I had a cup. The little can that says can of chips, that was a little can of wooden clothespins that now fits perfectly in my little uh, Make Mine a Builder's tea bags. And so I keep some of those in there to keep in my briefcase. So if I'm traveling and people say, oh, would you like a tea? And I go, no, I'd like a hot cup of hot water. I have my own tea bag. I'm one of those guys. So there you have it. That's how that works. Uh, so that's a little photo. And there's, so all I had was use what you have. I had a pencil. I had my little pen. And I had, of course, my little brush. And so I just sketched a little sheep. And then I used this brush and dipped it in my tea and painted it. You see a little bit of yellow tea right in there on his side. So, so that's how a, a journal is done for me. You know what that does for me? Listen to this very carefully. Let me get rid of that painting so you're not uh, while you're distracted by everything else I got on there. Listen to what that does for me. Less tools sometimes makes me more creative. It makes me push a little harder. It makes me uh, worry about contrast and shading a little better. It helps me balance. Sometimes if I have the full palette of colors and I have all my brushes at my disposal, I'll just start picking things up and I'll start swipping and swapping and swashing and, and whatever other S's you want to invite in there. And I, I can make a mud pie pretty easy. But if I just have one little brush and not even have my water brush, but if I have this brush and I just have to dip it into my tea every time, I, and put it on the page, it, it makes me concentrate on my shading a little better. Remember, I started small. So that's why I instruct and I, I tell everyone who's starting watercolors, don't start with a three by five foot canvas. Start with a small piece of paper and learn to do it small and then scale it up organically. The seed breaks open and starts to grow small and then it gets a feel for where it's living and takes in the sunlight and the water. And you see, I'm into a storytelling already. That's my life. So this morning I was sitting at there and I was uh, reading and I was, uh, I was wishing I had this, but it was already up here on my desk and I was wishing I had this. It was here. And then I thought, well, I wish I had this because then I could just paint this. And I thought, no, 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 no. What's one of my rules? It's it's just paint with what you have. And so um, so what I thought, I'm not going to paint a circle this morning. But what I am going to do is I'm going to tell you about Pete real quickly. And Pete gets a story as I have my coffee. I haven't had coffee yet, so I'm going to have something right here. Let me, let me just play a little something for you. Can I do that? Listen to this piece of music right here. I think it'll start. Um... I was reading a, an article this morning from one of these organizations that I was with for years and I follow now, and it was about uh, Pete Bennett. And Pete Bennett was um, Pete Bennett was born in 1929, and he died uh, seven days ago. Today's the 12th. Yes, he died seven days ago on July 5th, and I didn't find out about it until this morning. And I just had a moment to sit there and uh, and think about Pete Bennett. I. Pete was had, had come from California and uh, Texas, and and then also he was living in Dallas for a while, and then he moved to New Orleans. And I met him in the seventies, and he came up to me one night and he said, "Would you come to New Orleans and would you speak and storytell for us? And would you, and for a banquet, and would you do a couple songs?" And I said, "Man, I would love to." And he said, "All right, I want to send you a plane ticket, fly down." So I flew out of Asheville, North Carolina, and I went down to see Pete and Norma Bennett. He picked me up at the airport, just a pleasant, awesome face, awesome smile. Just one of those guys that you wanted to go, thanks for picking me up. Takes me to his house and it's it's by now it's late in the afternoon. I'm, I'm thinking flying in. I'd never flown into New Orleans and I hadn't flown too much in the 70s. So I'm flying in thinking, is there a dry place to land this plane? Cause I'm telling you this place, 
it, all I see is water everywhere. I had no idea where it finally, I, we put the plane down or somebody did. It's a small plane out of Asheville, you can imagine. I think there were eight of us on the plane, eight or 10. And uh, so I, I land and when we land, uh, I actually um, realized my feet are still dry, but Pete picks me up and takes me to his house. And so I get the afternoon just, I'm falling apart, you know. And I'm going like, oh man, I'm just, I just can't keep my eyes open. And so Norma, his wife says, I think you could use some coffee. And Pete goes, yeah, let's, let's make him some coffee. And so they disappear for a minute. And I just have a two minute power nap, just like crashing this old wing chair I'm sitting in. And inside, then she comes in with this tray and she's carrying this tray. And on the tray, she has this little French bodum. And, and there it was. It's the first time I'd ever seen one. And I go, what is that? She said, that is my coffee pot. And I said, what do you mean your coffee pot? There's no plug. There's no anything. And so she said, no, it's a, it's a French bodum. And I said, why do they call it a bodum? And she said, well, this is like a science beaker. Look at it. It's just a science beaker. It's bodum. And, and so it actually has the name bodum, right? Printed on the glass. And so I said, oh, so that's why they call it that. And so she said, I put the grounds in here and then I pour the hot water in just like so. And I just heated this water in my teapot. And I want this a little strong, so I'm gonna stop right there. And then I'm gonna set this over here out of the way. And then I'm just gonna give it a stir. And I think the best thing to stir it with is with the handle of this, uh, this watercolor brush. Oh man, that's good. I could have used the other end and just painted with it, I guess. And then you put the top, you don't put the top on for uh, just a minute here. And I'm going to let it just steep for a second. And then I'm going to let the whole thing, I'm going to put the top on and I'm going to, going to let it steep for another maybe three minutes, maybe four minutes total. And so I'm going like, well, you're kidding me. But what happens to all the grounds? And she said, come on, man. That's the fun part. Look, you're going to push this plunger down and the plunger is going to make all the grounds go to the bottom. And I go like, yeah, but what if I want a second cup? Isn't it going to be hot? She said, well, we're going to drink this pot right now and I'm going to bring in another one and we're going to do this again. That's the, the advantage of French press. It's always fresh. And so I said, she said, you know, when you make coffee out of, out of regular coffee pots and you let it drip through, that's fine. But then you let it sit on the burner and then the burner makes it stale and, uh, and stingy. Is that a word? Not stingy, but stingy. It's just like, yeah. And it, it just gets like motor oil on the bottom because it constantly heats and kicks in and heats and kicks in. You don't want that. You want your coffee to be fresh and you want it to be about 180 degrees and then you want it or 92 and then, then let it cool down to where you're ready to drink it. And so I said, my wife has never seen one of these. This was in the seventies, late seventies. And I said, where can I get one? And he said, Let's go. And I said, let me finish this cup of coffee. And then she served me a Biscoff. You know what a Biscoff is? You didn't know you're going to get a cookie lesson today. This is a Biscoff right here. This is a Biscoff. This is a little cookie. And when my, when, when Yaya is not making shortbread, this is what I have right here. These little cookies are called Biscoffs. They're made by Lotus. They serve them on airplanes sometimes, especially if you're flying to Europe, which I don't do, but once every 20 or 40 years. But anyway, that's where I found them originally. Uh, well, after I saw them in Pete and Norma's house, she serves me these little cookies. They have a little bit of a ginger taste to them. I get them at Trader Joe's. Oh, man. So, so then you put this top on, and it's been about almost three minutes because I'm rambling here. And then, so you have this like this. Can you see it right there? So people say, why do you always paint a French press in your rooster paintings? I go, because that's the best way to make coffee. After this steeps for a while, see, I always paint these paintings in there. I usually use a, I have one that downstairs that has a turquoise, Carol does it has a turquoise top. So I usually paint a turquoise top and then I paint the peep up here lots of times. And the Rue's always saying, hurry up, we're dying for some coffee. So that's the concept right there. You see me hold it up in front of my face? That's it right there. Um, let me give you a full shot of this thing, then I'm going to press it down. Boop! There it is right there. Take a look. This one is uh, is only about four cups, maybe two and a half cups for me, really. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I went into the shop. Pete took me downtown, and I went into a shop, and I bought like a six-cupper. And I put down some serious money, and I said, well, the French are happy with their coffee pot. And lo and behold, Here's what happened. I packed that thing carefully and I brought it home and we used it for umpteen years. I mean, many, many, many years, 25 years. Now we have lots of these things, but here's what happens when you press it down. Let me see if I can do this uh, so you can see it. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold it like this. This is not the way to do it at home, 
but this is a way to do it here on the art desk. And then I'm just going to ease this down slowly. Don't press it like you're pumping. Pump at the well. Just ease it down slowly, slowly, slowly. And that fine screen is forcing all the grounds to the bottom. Boop, it just landed. And all this is fresh coffee. Now all I got to do is bring my cup over and pour this in. Oh, man, look at that. What a sound. Okay, this big old cup holds a lot. Now, I need to stir that again. So where's my stirring stick? Here it is. I'll use my pen this time here. Just stir it up a little bit and then just drop a little bit of cream in from a pinch pot. Boop. That's it. Just let it mix as I drink it and I'm ready to paint. Okay, so I thought might as well just, uh, so here's the thing. What made me think of Pete? Pete died uh, July 5th and I just found out about it this morning. And that story came rushing in because the man who, uh, it made me want some coffee and it made me want to uh, toast uh, his family. Uh, Norma left a few years before. He was 92. What a life. What a life. And I'll tell you, that man never stopped being excited about life and his faith and uh, people and relationships and community. He never did. So I stand on the shoulders of guys like Pete Bennett, who befriended a young 20-something-year-old and said, come to my house, and I'll serve you some great coffee, and we'll talk about fun things, and then tell some stories to people. And that's what I do today. Thank you for being a part of Roo Doodles. I'm not kidding. But thank you, Pete Bennett, for uh, examples. Oh, my heavens. Does it get any better than that? I bet I could dip that cookie in there. Mm. All right. So some of you are going to ask about the plate. Yes, it's from France. Don't forget who I'm married to, right? <laughs> she is something else. Oh, man, that's good. So it made me think of Pete this morning and uh, maybe a little coffee painting. So let's do a little coffee painting. Um, Joanne, thanks for being on the show. June Jones, Barbara Mayer, Susie DeLay. Yahoo! Alice Durham, Connie Fletcher, Donna Buckley. Uh, Barbara, uh, Beverly Schmidt, thank you for being on the show. Jen Althauser, sorry I missed the 300th day. The changing from the East Coast. Yeah, I know. It does me too. I've never, uh, I need to change sometimes. Just took my allergy pill. Thank you, Kathy. Send me one in the mail. Uh, Teresa Emmerich, thank you for uh, being on the show today. Jason Nicholas, thank you, buddy. Appreciate uh, talking to Jason yesterday via email. Jason, you know, during the last auction, he and uh, Sheila Nelson were bidding on something that I threw out here, and it was a little cooking roux. It was a, a hen that uh, it was a hen that was cooking uh, or baking biscuits, and um, I I wanted to um, let's see. I had a pen up here somewhere. Here it is. Um, I, I wanted to uh, add to that, and so I had this little uh, a little hen, and she had a rolling pen in her hand, and she was saying to it, well, I'll just read it to you. Here's the painting right here. The painting was this painting right here. It says, "It's a, I'm about to make biscuits, but if I need to come out there and smooth things out, I will. You know, it's a cartoon thing to think of the, the hen holding up the rolling pen and, and always sort of swinging it out. So this one uh, was purchased by... Uh, Sheila Nelson out in Bainbridge Island. And so, but before I could sell it, I added something to it. And I said, wouldn't it be fun if I threw in one of my wife's rolling pin collections? But before that, wouldn't it be fun if I painted an original Rue on the rolling pin? Whoa! And so there he is. And, uh, and it says, while you're waiting on the paint to dry, make biscuits. And I'm going to, of course, put uh, Sheila's name on this one. And then I'm going to put Jason's name on the other one. And I've painted each one of them a, and this will get a little bit of, uh, of a, a sealer. This isn't going to be to roll in biscuits with, but I guess you could. Um, but I wouldn't. Um, it's going to be to hang on the wall and just be a conversation piece sitting in your kitchen. So there it is. It's the uh, So this went together in the auction. I finished those things this weekend and sent an email out and I said, look, it's been, it's been three weeks or so since we had the auction. And I've been so busy that I'm just now getting around to finishing these two ruse. I've had them sketched on here. If you don't want them, I understand. They both said, no, please send us an invoice, send them on. And so there they are. So there's the rolling pin that matches her rolling pin. And, uh, and then they have a roux painted on there. So the hen's baking the biscuits and the roux here. While you're waiting on paint to dry, make biscuits. So I hope you guys enjoy those in your kitchen. They'll be going out uh, this week. 
always fun to do something creative for you guys. And that makes a story. And so uh, here's here's the story right here. And I, I paint this little root a lot right here. So it, it's uh, I just draw that little bottom, and this is what I do. I just draw a little dome like this. And if you're a um, if you're a farmer, it's a lot like drawing a um, silo. And then you got the band across here like this. And you got the handle coming down. See. Here it is right here. This handle's a little more round. I kind of like the little square handle. It just looks a little more fun European to me. And that's hot on the bottom, by the way, while I'm holding it there. And so I just come in here and make this kind of come across. And then I want to draw the bottom in like that. I like the little plunger to be up like so. And then the little part of it down here. And then this is a circle. And you know there's a little bit of a curve when you're drawing circles like this. Some of you are so good at sketching. I was starting to say a little while ago, it doesn't take you long to be on this show and realize that um, there's a lot better artist on this show than me. I just started this show and tried to pull you out from beneath uh, the floorboards and, and make you reach in the bottom drawer of your cupboard and get the watercolor supplies and the old brushes you left and at least yell at them and wake them up or go get some fresh ones and you don't need a whole lot remember paint with what you have a few good pens i use pen tails inner gel needle points i use fountain pens i use the uh uh, the Extreme Gel Pen from Yasutoma. I use a few American Journey brushes that are these green handle ones you see on my desk. I use uh, I use a lot of Yasutoma uh, bamboo brushes. You see those in a piece of bamboo because I have some bamboo out of my yard, and so I just cut a piece off. You know, it has a solid bottom in it if you cut it in the right place. So I grab those, and that's what I'd use to make art. I keep a few colors here. I keep colors in my pocket all the time, except for this morning. I came up here last night, set, I emptied out my pockets, and then this morning when I uh, got dressed, different pair of pants, I ran downstairs and went, oh, rats. I left my uh, paint upstairs. Excuse me for talking with my mouth full, but uh, here we go. Uh, Bob, uh, Paulette Hamilton, glad you're on the show today. Jeanette Seal, thank you. M Michelle, Morning, beautiful people. Appreciate you, Michelle. Pat Lightbody, Wisconsin Bratwurst. Greeting to all. There it is right there. <laughs> Nothing like a big Bratwurst for breakfast. Sue Kane, happy birthday from Australia to someone. Um, hello, Skeeter Pal. Had a wonderful talk with Skeeter last week. Got an idea coming up with Skeeter. I'll be telling you more about soon. Uh, Victoria Reinhardt Boyd, good morning to you. G Jan, it's Jane G Gillette. Man, that's a lot of J's and G's to say together, but I did it, I think. Heather Kuman, thank you for being on the show. Uh, oh, what goodness is on that plate? Yes, there you go. That's uh, that's my little uh, Biscoff cookies. Mm, man, are they good or what? And I'm having this. I made French press this morning right here at the desk, but I better paint something because I got miles to go before I sleep. So what I'd like to do right now is uh, create another way to... Um, to maybe make this um, work here. Let's see if we can do it like this. Does that look like a little anvil to you? Yeah, I think so. I don't, I just come up with these as I think about them. This didn't come pre planned. I didn't even know I was going to paint this until I made coffee. So, you know, it is what it is. There's the little, uh, <clears throat> I love these little storytelling ruse that just, uh, there's cartoons for some of you. They're whimsical illustrations for me. Everything in art to me is a storytelling possibility. I call it a fodder for storytelling. And that's, uh, that's everything, you know, is worth a story. It's just like Pete Bennett this morning took me down a different road. And I was already on that road some because uh, I was having dinner with my son last night and uh, one of his co-workers just, just passed. Uh, he was not even 50 years old, healthy, exercise guy, um, not a meat eater, no sugar, uh, no alcohol, just uh, had one of those lives, just uh, was had dinner at our house one time here with Grant's team. And uh, was on his way home from a workout, 
and just heart stopped, uh, had a hundred percent blockage, a family thing that they didn't know about. He just, they didn't find it in checks. And, uh, by thank goodness, no one was, uh, uh, no one else was injured when he uh, crashed and uh, was driving home. And uh, so the the Coca-Cola people called my son last night during dinner and said, you know, this happened on Friday and we need you tomorrow to be the guy who goes in and not only tells his team, but takes his team over. And so we're going to just put the two teams together and you'll run his team. And so you'll know what to say to him, they said to my son. And he goes, I will tomorrow. And so, uh, so anyway, sometimes stories like that just happen. And so, uh, it, uh, kind of took me, uh, not, didn't take me by surprise, but, uh, had that on my mind. And then I opened up my email and had a note from the organization Young Life about Pete Bennett. So started off like that. So life's a gift, people. That's what I'm saying. Thank you for being a part of this show. You've been a part of the gift for the, for me for the last 300 days. Let's paint something here. And, um, because uh, uh, I had a busy weekend, and I got a crazy, crazy week. I'll explain more of it as we go through. I'm getting ready to have just a crazy week again. Um, got to have a paintbrush here. Let's use this little uh, Yasutoma uh, Zero, SW Zero, little pointed brush. Look at that thing. Is that kind of fun? That's kind of fun. So here, I'm going to try not to paint my cookie. Try not to get paint in my... Hmm... Um, might have to paint with some of this coffee, though. I like that color. I'll put a little I'll put a little cream in there. I need a little cream this morning. That probably doesn't help my sinuses, but... All right, so here we go. I should have a little music, don't you think? Let me just get a little music to paint this with here. Let's do something like uh, the girl who played the flute. I'm just kidding. Let's paint with a little water first. Woohoo! That brush wasn't completely clean. There's a little water. It's picking up the, the bleed from that uh, Yasutoma brush. Let's touch it with a little ultramarine blue. Just let that sort of sweep in that water. Let it be loose. I love this little thin brush. It lets me just drag those feathers around wherever I want them. Let's add a little bit of uh, lamp black in there like so. Uh, you, you say, well, gosh, he paints his feathers of his roosters like that all the time. You go, yeah, that's kind of how I saw him growing up, you know, except for the Rhode Island Reds that we had. And they were a mess all the time anyway. So, um, adding a little bit of that Rhode Island Red color in there. But I also got to go in here and always put a little turquoise down in here in the underbelly, the bottom, the, the uh, part that scrapes the ground. Okay, when they're laying down dusting, you know, ro roosters and chickens are, they're a messy lot, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we eat the stuffing out of them. Maybe eat them with stuffings in them, I'm not sure. Wow, look at that, I'm done. Look at that, how fast that was. See, quit and move on. Ah, oh, maybe one more little splash right there. And then I'll come over here and mix myself up a little leg color, a little bit of gamboge. Sound effects work. I think she's playing a mandolin, isn't she? I don't know why I put that orange in there. I usually don't do that. I usually try to make my own little orange because it gets too orangey. I can say orangey because I went to University of Tennessee for, gosh, almost the whole quarter. All right, so there's a little bit of, uh, look at that. See what turned out into be? Just a little bit of orange and yellow mix with a little bit of that uh, French gray. This French gray used to be called Harbor Gray or Bar Harbor Gray. I'm going to Bar Harbor uh, in September. So I'm going to stand in that harbor and probably paint a sailboat. Dang, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? I don't know if the owner of the sailboat will be too excited about me painting it, but uh, we'll see what happens. I want to go back to this color right here. I want to go back to this turquoise and paint the top of my boat in turquoise just because I think that's a fun way to do it. Paint this. and I think I'm going to do the handle here, just a matching set. Uh, you know, Martha Stewart got a hold of it. And up in New England, I need a little coffee in here, so I'm going to just get some water, drop it in here first, and let that pen bleed. And that's a little too much water, so I'm going to take a paper towel, clean paper towel, and just push it in there, erase some of that. And I'm going to go get my coffee color. I think I'm going to use a little bit of brown. I'm going to use a little bit of black. I'm going to use a little bit of sienna. And then I'm just going to let my brush, kind of a dry brush, just kind of put all that together and create just sort of that look of fresh coffee coming in maybe a touch more black on this side right here that's looking pretty good right there whoa ho, ho. isn't that great 
All right, I think I just had a uh, uh, text come up. It shouldn't even have been there. That's weird. Sorry. Okay. Oh, Mother Hubbard, my cupboards are looking bare. <laughs> Morning, artist. Um, love your dragonflies. Waiting for one to fly into my mailbox. Yes, they should be on the way. They were mailed last week. Deborah Wright out. Thank you for being on here. Sorry, it's storming in Missouri. Um, Tia, thanks for being on board from Maine. I think you're up in Maine, but you got a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. I love that. Soggy like my toast, Jason Nichols says. <laughs> Janice Scott, thanks for being on the show. Yvette, thank you. Mickey Hupp. Uh, Ricky, ah, from the Green Lowlands. Yes, uh, go Vars. Ricky from the Netherlands. Thank you for being on the show. Raylene Culberson, thank you for being here out in Washington. Um Golly, thank you guys for piling on. Irma, I thought of you this morning, my friend. Irma gave me this brush, the one I carry in my pocket all the time. I'm going to put it back in there right now, the little brush. Irma sent me that. Uh, Pat Thompson and uh, Shanlon Martinez, thank you for being on the show. Um, Gracie Rowden, thank you for being here. Reardon, I think it is. The KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. I know all about that. I used my bug out bag yesterday for the first time, sketching the slow river sketch. Ooh, sketching with the slow river sketchers in Essex, uh, Mass. Oh my gosh. I, I love the name, the slow river sketchers. <laughs> Don't you love that? I'm learning there's a story in everything. Jason Nicholas, as we talk about storytelling, my friend, you're going to learn that there's a story in everything. Yes, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's this anvil that's sitting on my desk right here, okay, that I bought in Kansas. Um, I don't care. I, it's, if, it's anything, a spoon, uh, a special spoon, a bowl that came from somewhere, and so everything in your household, everything that you touch, everything that you pass on to your children, everything that you buy should have a story involved. Why are you going to purchase something that doesn't have a story? Oh, I just bought this old thing. I don't really like it. No, 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 no. You know, my wife uh, always wanted a convertible. She said, I need a convertible. And she said, there's a time where you should just drive and let your hair blow in the breeze. And so... I was working for Fox News, and it was time for me to get a new truck. This was 2004, and so I was doing some commercials for a Ford, for the Ford company, and I couldn't really trade off. That's not fair. You can't do that, but I actually uh, went up to uh, talk to them one day, and I said, hey, uh, um, De uh, Del Jared, it was Del Jared Ford who worked for NASCAR or drove for NASCAR, and I said, Del, I'm coming up, uh, or I said to the company, I'm coming up there. And I, I need I need to buy a truck, man. My old truck is just falling apart. I got to have something to drive. He said, come see me, man. We'll put you in some old truck to get you back and forth to the TV station. You've got it covered. We'll make it work affordable for you. I said, I'm on my way. So I go up there and he said, tell me about what you're driving now. And I said, well, my wife's driving this uh, car that I really wish I could uh, put her in better wheels because he says, what she want? I said, a convertible. He pushes back from his desk. He said, come with me. We walk outside and he says, take a look at this. I looked at this little convertible. He said, here are the keys. I said, you brought them out with you? He said, hey, I, this is not my first barbecue. I've done this before. He throws me the keys. He says, drive that home, park it in your driveway. Let her look at it. We'll take a look at what trucks we have. Uh, come back and see me uh, Monday. This was a Friday afternoon. I said, he said, keep it for the weekend. <laughs> I drive home in his car. I call her. Before I get home, I say, hey, Carol, I'm driving in. She says, are you going to be in one of those little orange pickup trucks that there's not enough room in there for me and the bag and anything else? And I said, maybe. I was like, walk outside. I pull in behind our house. I get the top down on this convertible. She goes, what? What is that? I said, let's just keep this for the weekend, see if we like it. We take off. We drive around town. I drive back to see him on Monday. And I said, uh, and you must be the best salesman I ever met. I said, you know that that uh, convertible's never coming back here, right? He said, yep. Let's find a truck. So I wound up buying a truck. And so every car since then, you know, so that convertible, she ran the wheels off that convertible. And then it came time for her to have another car. And I'm going like, look, I'm not a rich man. I got to find my wife a car. So I called uh, my friend who works at Mercedes in South Charlotte. And I said, I need something used. I need something inexpensive. I need something that I can put my wife in. And she's in Florida for two weeks. 
And he says, what's she driving now? And I said, this old beat up convertible that we've had for a long time. And he said, where is it? I said, it's locked up to South Carolina, my, my, my daughter's garage. And uh, cause she flew out from there. And he said, don't worry about it. Come and pick this one up. So I went down and I bought this car and uh, I drove it to Florida and parked it in the airport parking lot where I was picking her up and she was coming in. And so we're walking out and she goes, where'd you park? Where's your truck? And I go, where is my truck? And so I pull the keys out and I start hitting the button like this. She says, what's that? I said, that's the button to my new truck. And I go, do, 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 do. and finally, whoop, 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 the lights come on and they had put a whole bouquet in the back seat of the car. And that's how she got her little used Mercedes convertible. And now, you know, we've run the wheels off of that thing. So, you know what? We just go one story at a time. So, yes, everything is a story. There's my coffee painting for the day. And uh, I call this the uh, I call this the uh, blacksmith coffee. I've never drawn one. I think I may have drawn one with a uh, uh, an anvil before. So, you can see he's got the rope here. He's going to say something about letting it go. But let me paint something else for you this morning. And uh, so this is how you make a story. <clears throat> Would you hurry up and let that anvil down? You know, so there ought to be something there about letting the anvil fall. I'm going to let this dry before I rip it loose. I think it needs a splatter. Let's put a little splatter in here. A uh, little. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's going to work well. A little uh, ultramarine blue. Just touching this little brush in it. See it kind of come in there like that. I'm just holding this one up and smashing this one in. Smashing it is the word that in the South, you don't say press in on the clutch. You say mash it or smash the clutch in. Um, just part of that uh, storytelling. There we go. Um, fun little painting. You're going to make coffee or talk about it. And maybe that's uh, maybe that's the, uh, the caption right there. Let's just put it on there right now and be done with it. You're going to make coffee and that's, that's, uh, I'm making fun of myself there. Why? Because I told you about making coffee all this morning before I actually made it. Okay. So there's, there's my painting. All right. I love it. Hey, uh, one thing I sat down to do last night when I came up here, Carol and I just watched uh, the last uh, recorded, uh, not the last, we watched the Tour de France. Maybe some of you don't, but it's not been an interesting tour this year. It has been devastating for riders, but it has been in a country that didn't have a whole lot of fun castles and cities and things to look at. We watch it as a travel show. <laughs> we don't watch it because we're both bike riders, okay? Uh, I gave that up a long time ago. We rode 480 miles one time down the Blue Ridge Parkway. And uh, we mostly rode downhill. And then I hauled the bikes uphill and we go down the hill again. But we rode 480 miles from Roanoke all the way back into Asheville, North Carolina. We were young. And uh, we had a couple bicycles that weighed probably more than five of their bikes weigh today, if you put them all together. But uh, it made us enjoy the scenery. So these guys don't see the scenery. They're watching the road. And I, I used to think that this was the silliest sport in the world until I realized these are the toughest men that I have ever seen in my entire life. These guys, these guys are, um, they go 60 miles an hour on asphalt wearing silk um, undies, it looks like, you know, because when they fall down and slide, it just skins all that off in a flash. And then all they're left with is just, just road rash, you know. And so then what happens is they can't even get off the bike in the race to go, um, to, to go to a doctor. The doctor car pulls up and he sprays something. And I think that's just alcohol because it just makes them go faster. They're going like, nah, I got to ride faster to cool off this burning, um, um, wound that I have here and so uh they then they just it's amazing you know in NASCAR you know you're watching the race in NASCAR and if it starts to sprinkle in turn one you know they they'll get a caution go whoa 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 stop you know we'll get these guys somebody's going to hit a wall and you're going like wait a minute they have on helmets and neck restraints and they're in a car that can tumble and fall over and blow up and burn and turn sideways into the concrete and still walk out and say thank you these guys uh, a plastic helmet and uh, their shoes are clipped into the pedals they're on a bike that weighs eight pounds and and they're wearing nothing and and you get points i think if you can throw a water bottle and hit a spectator 
I think you get extra points if you can eat a candy bar with one hand while you're doing 50 miles an hour downhill. And then stuff it in your backpack and throw your trash out for somebody else. And then people pick up the trash and sell it on eBay. It's the strangest sport I've ever seen. I used to think rodeo people were tough, and they still are. Maybe the roughest sport, but I don't know. You ride 108 miles um, in something lighter than your pajamas after you've fallen down five times. And you go like, my arm's broken, but i got to finish this stage because I get extra points if I do. I don't even understand that. But there is one guy that I like, and I sketched this out last night. I thought I'd just paint it. It's the Tour de Rue, and I haven't done a Tour de Rue this year since the uh, since the Tour de France started. So I thought I'd do a little Tour de Rue painting here for you and then uh, finish up the show on this this morning and put this one out there for some of you who are bike fans. Like I said, I watched this show. Uh, we watched this show for the tour, uh, not so much for... Uh, <clears throat> or for the travel, <clears throat> not so much for um, the riding, except that now we understand we're looking for certain people and we want to know how they're doing. And last night, there was a moment where I had a victory. I wanted to jump up on the sofa and go, yes, Kuss. Uh, he's a guy from uh, Durango, uh, Colorado, the U.S., who was the first guy in about 10 years you know, or ten, one of the 10 guys during the tour to win a stage for an American. He didn't have on the polka dotted vest, but he uh, he was pretty cool. I'll tell you that. He was uh, he was so excited. These guys are all in their 20s. And do I long to be in my 20s again? No. I long to feel like I am, but I, I'd love to still have the wisdom of what I know now. Because sometimes riding 60 miles an hour when it starts pouring down rain, if you hit the wall, tough darts, and you're on an eighth-inch tire. You're you're not on four rubber tires made by Goodyear. You know, I'm going like, what is this deal? Toughest men I've ever seen, but that's what I love doing. Carol and I watch that in the evenings. We record it, um, and then we fast forward through, uh, you know, all the commercials and all the other stuff we're not paying attention to. And uh, sometimes we don't know what we pay attention to, but uh, anyway. So I thought I'd just paint a little uh, tour route this morning because they're over in the Alps. I mean, think about this. They're riding in the Alps. I mean, like Lewis and Clark had a hard time crossing. <laughs> Lewis and Clark had a hard time crossing the Rockies um, with a team. They had a hard time portaging the river with canoes. You're giving these guys bicycles and say, see that? That's the Pyrenees. I need you to go over that. You see those lavender fields? Ride next to those and how, see how your sinuses work. And then we're going to head uphill 12%. You might as well be riding up a telephone pole. And that's kind of how this is for us to watch this thing. And we, we just go, these people, what is it that drives the human to uh, push himself to that limit? And then I get to think, how blessed are we? I go downstairs, make a cup of coffee, and I get to pick up my favorite brushes and my colors, and I get to paint. And uh, so I thought on behalf of the tour, I always do a painting each year. And for the last few years, it's been one of this with this color on. I guess I could have put him in a yellow... Um, I could have put him in a yellow uh, jersey... But I, I think he's, I think roos are mountain climbers. You know, that's why they're up on top of the barn. I've never really seen a rooster get up on top of the barn. I've seen them get up on top of the hen house like a goat. But uh, I hadn't seen them get up on top of the barn. So I think I am going to put a little yellow in these wheels right here, though, just like a little yellow rim. I see that sometimes on television. Um, just a little highlight there. Some company makes their tire. Here's why they made their tire like that. You know what? This this would be a cool looking bike if I painted it that tear core. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's paint it um, periwinkle. Yeah, let's do a periwinkle. You got to be tough to ride in the Tour de France. Think about this, or the France as they call it. You not only have to be have the tough hide of a cowboy. You have to be willing to wear a polka dotted red jersey and ride a lavender bike. Now, come on. That's that's tough right there. That is tough. I mean, that is being somebody that you didn't think you were going to be. Um, and let's put a little bit of a yellow feather in here just to have some of that coming down. And uh, there we go. Look at that guy, man. He's coming together. <laughs> And uh, it doesn't take long to tell a story, you know? In fact, most, uh oh 
Most good stories are short stories. I need some green on for these sunglasses. Let's just put a little bit of this green right here, just in these sunglasses right here. Look at that right there. These guys wear some cool glasses. And let's create a little black road underneath him here. Let me get this pen again. Just create a little bit of this uh, road that I do with this pen. There it comes like this. Signing on late? That's okay. Chinoa, glad to have you anyway. And you were styling. Um, good morning, slip in. Hey, no problem. Assault fly rifle this morning. Got a pesky old fly. Yeah, so it's called bug assault. Pete! Yeah, Skeeter Pal. Remember Pete? 92. I only saw that this morning. Skeeter would know Pete Bennett. What a great man he was. They make a Biscoff spread? Mm. I don't know. The watering can pottery from Terry Tardy Turquoise. I'm glad to see you sign on as the watering can pottery, Terry. It's always great to, to see you from out in Oregon saying I'm back to throwing pots. I thought of you this morning when I put my cream in a little pinch pot. There it is right there. A little squeeze. See a little pinch pot? It has little dimples on the sides right here. Can I, can I focus? Let me see if that can focus. There it is. Look at that. Got little dimples right here. So you put your fingers Pinch pot. Has my little cream right there. Pour a little in there. I got a little bit of coffee left here. It's still really good and warm just sitting here. Not steeped too much. Not stale from being overheated. Mmm. That is so good. Now I use my AeroPress to make individual cup. Yeah, AeroPresses are good. Uh, stop! My favorite color. <laughs> Off to make coffee. I'm drooling. Mm, I can smell it. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, can't share a pic, but Biscoff comes in. Yeah, now this is not Biscotti, but this is Biscoff. Let me show you again if you just signed on. Look. Biscoff, made by Lotus since 1932. And these were made in 1933. They're a little stale. Just kidding. Um, how much grounds do you use for beaker? Depends on how strong you want the coffee. I have a coffee spoon, let's say you a tablespoon. In a beaker this size, two and a half tablespoons would be great. Two tablespoons might be fine. Three if you want to knock the socks off. Four if you're looking for something that tastes like it's got a shot of espresso in it. And also, if you're grinding your beans, grind your beans for French press. Don't gr grind them. Grind them a little finer, but not too fine. You don't want to make dust because you don't you want that all to press down. So, and by the way, I gotta tell you something. Um, you can order this from Amazon. I don't, I don't sell these. I'm not trying to sell these. Um, uh, I just like them. Bodum, they, there's a hundred brands. The reason I use Bodum and it's B-O-U-D-U-M, uh, the company is that Bodum has been making these things since the dawn of time. And this is really an industrial strength beaker that's inside here. And their parts are really good. Uh, the screen is good. Uh, Lots of companies. You, uh, I found this one. You ready? Drum roll, please. I found this one when I went to buy a white shirt at Goodwill for three ninety nine, and it had never been opened. It's a small one. And I thought that's going to be perfect for my art desk. That just happened last week. I just bought this one. Uh, yes, the the these plates are, are all have different uh, fruits drawn in them. This is a hand. Mm, it was a hand drawn plate, and this is from Guy in France. There it is, right there. We'll say blue, B-L-E-U. There's the plate. And uh, these all came from France. You know why? Because my wife carried them back from France. That's why they came from France. And there's a story in those two. Trust me. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Okay. I live with a bon vivant. Look the word up. <laughs> all right. So got a few lavender fields out here. There's some right in there. That's not lavender. That just got away from me right there. Hold on a second here. There's a little lavender field out there. Let's see if we can make some lavender fields in it. I'm going to go in with my little pen. Watch this. and just, just create some little stems out there like this and then rows. Painting lavender is something I've never done, but I do love it when, uh, when I brought some lavender home the other day from my friend's farm, and it was pretty cool. Uh, Denise, I don't think I told you I brought that lavender home. I did. Just stuck my knife down in the ground and pulled up some of it. Got to carry a pocket knife always. Um, need a pen that works. I've got all these pens here. There's what I'm looking for right there. Just want to put some sprouts in here. A little bit of the road going up. Maybe there's some, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of marks on the tires. And it's about ready to call it here. Lavender bicycle. Um, 
a little bit of a, a, an eye in the sunglasses. I'm going to touch up that uh, red on the comb just a little bit right there. Just throw a little in. Maybe a little bit of orange in that red just to kick that off a little bit. And I want a spot of orange right here. And I want just some beauty spots of orange. Grab a pencil here and just give me some splash of just a little orange back on the tail. And then I want to dirty this up. This guy is riding in the... Uh, I want a little Payne's gray over here. I'm just tickling my brush in that and just kind of do it in here like this. And then let's put a little, uh, little blue in the sky. There's some right there, just like that. This is on a piece of nine by 12 piece of paper. Should have done that in maybe a green down here. This is, uh, you know, the interesting thing about these guys, they're running 40, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. They're coming around the corner. The roads are wet and there's no guardrails. And so you say, hey, if you go off the cliff here, uh, you won't be in the Tour de France anymore. As a matter of fact, you won't be in this life anymore. And they're going like, hey, it's okay, man. You know, it's sort of like my bull riding pole that I rode the other day. So, uh, all right. Hi from Kansas. Onita, Omar, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Rue, you flung a craving on me. I got to go find cookies in my bottom pot. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Silly me. I thought you stopped Facebook Live at 300 days. No, I just got started. Hey, glad you love the rolling pin. Uh, Jason, uh, he's going to put it uh, for for <laughs> putting an addition on my kitchen just for the drilling pin. You mean the rolling pin, but it could be a drilling pin. Thank you. Best pen I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. Well, you know what? I'm going to do another one because Carol liked it so much. I'm going to do one for my house. And if I do another one, I'm going to do two. So I will just tell you this. In the next auction I do, um, draw doesn't have to be a four-letter word. (laughs) No, John Robert Small, it could be drawn. So it's more fun. All right? Uh, You don't chase groundhogs away, Gracie. You pop them. Okay? Um, I have a rolling pin collection using calligraphy skills on them. Love the idea. There you go. Carol has a rolling pin collection. We've been collecting. We were going to hang them in the window. She needed 40 of them to hang in the windows. And now it looks like I'm going to paint them and sell them. Um, have a safe flight and request a biscotti. Ruben, I'm a friend of Skeeter Pals and I love your work. Hey, Ruben, thank you for being on the show, my friend. Glad you are here. Any friend of Skeeter Pal is, well, he's a friend of Skeeter Pals. That's all I got to say. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. So, Ruben, you're going to find a, a good community here. Um, all these people are saying hello to you. Terry Tardy, Terry Coyce, yes. You're going to make some uh, – Pat Brooks, thanks for being on the show this morning. What did I miss? Did Michael Spang use some art brushes? Um, I did spang here some art brushes. Um, uh, I threw some here and there. So, um, let's see. Fugal crafter lives somewhat near Bar Harbor, Maine. She's a great watercolor artist. Maybe you should paint. Yeah, I'm not going to do a paint off with anybody. If you've seen me paint lately, you don't want that. Uh, would love to go whale watching in Bar Harbor. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going to stay at a place, uh, that, um, that is made out of an old whale. I'm just embellishing here. Okay. Um, so, Pat, thanks for being on the show. Hey, I got to do a little book plug before I leave. Um, this is the, uh, I got I to gotta label this. Where's my pen? I've never had a place so messy with cookies and coffee that I couldn't find my pens. All right, let's see if my, let's see if my fabulous pen is writing this morning. Oh, look at that. There it is. Okay. Um, nope, I'm not going to write with that. It's not what I want to write with. Here it is right here. Here's what I want to write with. Tour de Rue, July 12, 2021, Michael Doodles, RueDoodles.com. There we go. There's my, uh, there's my painting. I like that, la- I like that lavender bike. That's kind of fun, huh? That turned out well. Turned out better than I thought. I want to touch those. Then I got to just do a little bit of uh, business here, and then I'm going to head off. Let me tell you what's going to happen with my summer, uh, the rest of it. I have got a crazy week. I'm editing today for uh, another uh, couple companies, and then I'm starting to build some B-Build props for a television show. And so make a note right now, if you have a pen, and I'll mention this again tomorrow, make a note, 
Thursday, 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 the Today Show. Not me, but a young man that I'm working with is going to be on the Today Show. Uh, they're going to uh, do an interview live uh, from him in Colorado. He's going to be coming to Knoxville, Tennessee real soon. And uh, he and I are working together. I'm working f- with him. I build things for him that he uses on the television show. So I'm going back to Knoxville to spend a week uh, shooting these television shows. And they'll uh, they'll open back up um, this is the second season. The first season will start premiering soon, and I'll tell you all about it. But Thursday, uh, somewhere in the Today Show, just record it. Um, his name is Taylor. He's a young man. He's about 35 years old. Um, <clears throat> funny funny little guy out of L.A. Uh, loves his kids, loves his wife, loves his children. He's uh, He does a fun uh, show on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, he's been picked up by uh, a television show that's coming soon. And I'll let them announce it, and then I'll tell you all about it. But I'm working on that show again. So Carol and I leave here, and we visit with some friends south of here for the weekend on a retreat deal that we helped start years ago. And then we uh, head to Knoxville with uh, all the tools, the welders and all these things that I'm building, some crazy builds that I'm doing. I'm doing a machine that actually roasts marshmallows. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you more about that, but uh, it should be fun. So um, all that's coming up. So make a note. Um, all right, here we go. I'm just about out of here. It's 10 o'clock. There's my, uh, there's my roux for the day. He's the tour de roux. And uh, he, it's not about 12. That's a, that's a little big. I don't know where you put that. I usually paint that a little smaller. But uh, hey, thanks for all the book sales. They're coming in. And uh, I am uh, actually... Um, I'm actually, um, they're available on Amazon right now, so you can order Amazon. Those of you who've pre-ordered with me through Etsy, and you can always order uh, these books on Etsy by going to roodoodles.com. It's called Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle, and it's uh, Roo Rules written by me. Uh, you want to keep painting? You want to paint better? 857. 20 minutes every day. Get behind the mule and keep plowing. And that's what you do. And here's the story of why that became a story to me, why that became a rule in my life. Start small and start simple. What did I just say this morning? Paint something small. Paint with what you have. That's also in here. Uh, these are things that I said. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall break. Uh, there's the bon vivant doing her splits. Yaya splits the globe. Art should draw the natural artist like a moth to a flame. If you're getting drawn in, oh, that's a blessing. Use what you have to be creative. So some of, the, some of the rules, These uh, some of these will become prints later this, uh, much, much later this fall. But the book is out there. And uh, and then Rubots is out there. And uh, I've just given, <laughs> I've given a couple of these away to some folks who are going to take it to some friends. And I'm, I'm also getting paint all over this one. So now it'll be probably given away. But here it is. It's a cross between Roosters and robots. I call it robots. It's free range creativity. There's a little robot on each page. A robot. Here's the robot rototiller. There's an explanation, somewhat humorous, I might add. And I've just written run on sentences so kids can say, oh, that's a story. And then there's a place here if you draw some of the things that are here. So that's what this is about. I see it for uh, for pencils and for small point, fine point markers. And uh, not necessarily crayons, but it would work. But it's a little detail for a crayon. This is the Rubot Popcorn Maker. Every artist has to have a snack, and chickens love corn, so why not popcorn? And who likes popcorn more than roosters? Dentist. That's who. And that's all in the book. So today, the farmyard, tomorrow, the world. Those are available now on Amazon.com, or you can get them directly from me at uh, roodoodles.com. Pat has got some shipped, and she's doing some marketing on that. And then uh, Pat and I split this project. So how fun is that? So uh, if we ever get out of the hole, uh, you're purchasing this book and being creative with it will take us both to dinner sometimes. Blessings to you. I'm out of here. I am. uh, I'm blessed. I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing. And someone says, and the creeks don't rise. Uh, Even if they do rise, we'll probably be here.